Blessings on blessings on blessings. It's Pastor G. It's Lady T. It's another beautiful day to be alive. We're excited about it. We're excited about it on this wonderful Wednesday. This is called a wonderful Wednesday. I am excited about this day. Hey, I want you to share us. If you will, go and start sharing us today. This is going to be an up, a day of uplift. I got some incredible information that I believe that it's my privilege to share and as well as my duty. I am thankful. 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 If you will, be thankful with me today. Be thankful with me today. I, 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 I know God is good. He's good to me, and I know he's good to you as well. Let's be thankful today. Be thankful. Thankful, thankful, thankful. Thankfulness. It's it's not even Thursday, but it can still be thankfulness day. You know how they always try to go with the letter like thankful Thursday or thankful Tuesday. Well, this is a day to be thankful just because God has given you an opportunity to rise. Yeah. Just because he allowed you um, the opportunity and the chance to do what he said do. Yes. Just because he's allowed you the opportunity to be obedient to him. Be thankful. Yeah. Just be thankful that he would even even want you, would want to call you, would want to be close to you, would want you to be in his presence. I mean, it's it's I live a life of thanksgiving because when I think I mean, I know it's like cliche, but when I think about his goodness mm -hmm. and when I think about all the things that he's done for me, when I think about all the things that he's brought me through, when I think about all the things that he knows about me, and then yeah. I can still see that he wants me and he loves me and he's covering me, yeah. I, I got to be thankful. I have to. I have to. Yep. And, and, and I'm telling you, it's, 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 it's a beautiful thing when you can see through your temporary, your temporary uh, uh, dilemmas, temporary, the temporary things that you're going through. And I do emphasize temporary. Uh, I do emphasize temporary. You are in a temporary situation that you're going through. And I do emphasize uh, uh, through. <laughs> I do emphasize that you are going through something. Remember, this is a, 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 a journey of going through some things. And everything that you encounter in this through process strengthens you. The through strengthens you. It, 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 uh, it, it gives you, it gives you a, a, a stamina. It, it builds your uh, 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 muscles in the times that you, 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 you have to pull yourself out of something with the help of the Lord. Build muscle, you build strength, you build stamina, and so this is a season that uh, stamina is built. Your trust level is rising in God, and you're going to see the end results of your persistence. Mm -hmm. Prayer, persistence will always produce a product, and you're about to see a product from the from God. This is a promise season, and I want to emphasize: that faith people need pro uh, uh, reminders, and I'm here to remind. I'm here to remind you of your of greatness. Never define yourself by the current struggle. The current struggle is defined by who God uh, has already created in you. So he sends the appropriate. He sends the appropriate. The, listen to me. He sends the appropriate challenges into your life so that it can build your stamina, so that it can build your muscles. Uh, it is emphasized, and I say it oft times because this is something that God shared with me. If you have a king-size anointing or a mission from God placed upon you, it is never engaged, it is never awakened until there is a king-size challenge. Issued and accepted. Issued and accepted. This is why so many of you, it seems like, Constantly, you're in struggle. If you have overcome one thing, then there's another thing. Well, you are always going to be like that because you are an overcomer. We call it a network overcoming opportunities. Hmm. Whenever I am faced by something that is uh, uh, seems like it's bigger than me, it is. 
And so that means I got to trust in the one that's bigger than me All that right. actually gave me the life to live. And I trust him. And so I overcome every time a challenge comes, that's an overcoming opportunity. And the more I overcome and trust God, the more I want to overcome and trust God. Mm -hmm. And so get ready for a greater life. I need you to share me with your friends. I need to share everybody that's in house blessings. Pastor Marissa. Thank you so much, mom. Thank you so much, Laura. Thank you so much. Uh, Dr. Kimberly Kibay. Thank you so much. Uh, my friend, Tori Delaney. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Congratulations on your music. Tori, check Tori Delaney out. All right, uh, and Pastor Joel, thank you, and Katrina Robson, thank you. I need to share something real quick. Uh, it's been my mandate and mission uh, uh, to defend my faith. Uh, when I say defend, I'm not getting into any arguments with anybody, but I like to, I, I won't sit back and see things happen and not say something because I know how good he is and, and what the possibilities are for those that trust him. And I know what the enemy's agenda is to get you to not trust. Somebody suffered something and now your fate might have been fractured because you just knew it was going to happen. Well, I'm telling you emphatically that it is going to happen. It just didn't happen now. And perhaps what you would expect to happen was too small and God wanted to do something greater in your life. So a delay is not a denial. Mm -hmm. Don't ever get that messed up. If God said it, your delays are not denial. Your delays are actually God building something greater in you, greater in you. He wants you to expect more, expect more, expect more. Now, I was thinking you said something that was a cliche. And I guess uh, I want to speak one too since you said one. I want to say something too. Uh, there's a song. Uh, there's a song that really blesses me in times of struggle, in the times of challenges that are, are major. You know, uh, 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 I'm gonna tell you something. I'm gonna give you a secret. Your name might not even be called in the social circles, <laughs> but that <laughs> that's not the thing that qualifies you. The thing that qualifies your life is that God has already placed in you a mandate that is much larger, you know, you know, much larger. Sometimes God don't allow you to get caught up into the hoopla because your work is so strategic and the people that you need to be connecting to might not be people that are notable at the moment, but God wants you to build something in them. In the time that you are, 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 are coming up, you're bringing people up. Uh, and, and so many of you might get it twisted because success in the eyes of, especially in what we do, success is based off how many people know your name. Mm. But what God is doing, he's redefining. You are doing strategic work. Mm. Uh, 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 there's a book called The Art of War. And it's interesting. It's, a, it's about brothers. Uh, uh, it's a story now about brothers that are, are, are medical healers. And one brother became very notable because of his work in the medical field, he was able to, uh, uh, when people got sick, he was known for being a great healer. And they asked him the question. They said, you got brothers that are, 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 are in the medical field too. Which of you are the greatest? Now, they're asking the one that's got notoriety, which are the greatest? And he says, no, my other brother is greater than me. And they said, who is, who is that? And he said, well, you don't know his name. And they said, well, I thought he was greater than you. He says, he, he is because he prevent more. <laughs> he prevent more I'm working on stuff after mm -hmm. <laughs> he gotcha. prevent more sicknesses and so he's greater he, he know how to prevent man wouldn't it be great if we had more people that prevent preventiveness prevent yeah we, we can prevent and so God is causing you that's why your name is not called because people don't know because you prevented hey. them hey you prevent the thing. Is there's some. You yeah. stop it. Yeah, the, you stop it. Yeah. 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 So it don't get no publicity okay. because you prevented it. Mm -hmm. And so just because you don't have any publicity does not mean that you're not significant. You've been preventing things from happening. You've been doing quiet work, which is the most significant work. You know, a lot of times we, you know, we like to watch uh, Declassified. And we understand through this uh, a show called Declassified. I'm talking to somebody. Through the show uh, Declassified, we discover how many plots was spoiled. <laughs> How many pots were spoiled? That's why uh, I think we should always thank God for the danger seen and unseen. Mm. We get the publicity about the ones that we saw, but there's so many that have uh, pots that of the enemy that have been spoiled by you and through the work that you've done. And so we got to get this. You are great. Your, your name might not be over the airways, but the work that you do, you've been saving lives. 
you've been saving lives unhindered. Sometimes you get publicity, uh, your work begin to be hindered because you're trying to deal with so many notables that's trying to gravitate to you to, to because of your name and what you got access to. But don't ever think, never judge your size by your eyes. That's what I'm saying. Never judge your size by your eyes. Never look out and say, I'm as big as what I see with my eyes. No, you're much larger than what you see with your eyes. There's too many people being blessed by you that perhaps never even call you to say, hey, you blessed my life. You said something that totally um uh changed my life you totally and you rarely get those calls because uh they have dealt with other people and now they're saying well my life has been totally changed by this person you might not even get the call so what it what what do you do you keep doing what you're doing God is rewarding you. Keep doing what you're doing. Keep doing what you're doing. Keep blessing people. Keep blessing people. Keep blessing people. Thank you, Jennifer, for being in the house. Thank you so much, my friend, Apostle Victor Wayne. Thank you so much, Ellis Williams. Thank you so much, uh, Evie Cook. Thank you so much, Sheila. Blessings, Katrina Robinson. Now, let's get into this. Now, here's the cliche I was talking about. If you have not shared me, share me. I, I need to share something with you in the Word of God because this is going to be a powerful season. This is going to be a powerful, powerful season. Now, my hope is built... On nothing less than Jesus' blood and his righteousness. I want to say that with 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 with, with all confidence. I'm not ashamed of the gospel. I, I'm not ashamed. I'm not ashamed of the name that I carry. I'm not ashamed. We 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 we're letting too much stuff go by, not to get in confrontation with people, but when it's our time to speak. We got to let them know who we believe in and the cause and the reason for our lives. Mm -hmm. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and his righteousness. And I think the second part says, I dare. I dare not trust. I dare not trust. I dare not trust. I don't even want to think I'm good enough to. I dare not trust the sweetest frame. Sweetest frame. But holy, entire life. Leans on Jesus' name. That's who I am. That's where I'm going to be. I'm not changing. That's where life begins. In my faith in the one that saved me. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and his righteousness. You can say whatever you want to say about me. You can say you're crazy. You're crazy, boy. I am. I have lost my complete mind because I know how good he's been to me. I know how wonderful he is. And for those that doubt him, you you might not have ever had a mm -hmm. real relationship with him because you cannot experience him on the level that I have experienced him and doubt what he does. I dare not trust. I dare not trust. I dare not trust any other route because it is he that say, in him I live, in him I move, and in him I have my being. I want the record to be set straight. I want the record to be set straight. Yeah, I got talent. Yeah, I, 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 I inspire. Yes, but my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood my God. and his righteousness. That's where it all begins with me. I'm not going to be ashamed. I'm going to defend what I believe every time I get an opportunity. So if you call me for the opportunity, I'm going to defend. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus. So whatever door shuts as a consequence of my hope being built, on nothing less than Jesus blood. Let the door shut. Let the door shut. Because I know that that's my power. That's all. Everything that I hope to be lies in that. Now, I need to unpack that because I just made a statement that I'm standing on. And I have to know why I stand on the statement. In 2 Corinthians, I want to read something. 2 Corinthians, uh, uh, what is it? Uh, chapter 1. 2 Corinthians chapter 1. Now, we are still in, the, in this series called Full Coverage Assurance. Of course, that's a play on words. We have full coverage insurance that covers our whole life. And so as a believer in God, I got full coverage assurance. If his word said it, I can believe it. I can stand on it. And that sells it. Too many things we're facing without a word. We're, 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 we're basing it off our uh, gift and ingenuity. And that thing fails us really quickly. And so now I'm basing it off God's word that can never fail. It stands strong throughout the generations. What we're going to do in this generation, we're going to do what the generations have done. They stood on what God said because his word is where the power is. So second, second Corinthians uh, chapter number one, my hope is built on nothing less. Share me, share me. My hope is built on nothing less. Now let's explore this particular text. Second Corinthians one, verse 19 and 20. Listen to what it says. It says, for the, 
for the Son of God. Now we're talking about Jesus. We're talking about Jesus. Make no mistake. I don't want to. I don't want to. I don't want to subliminally uh, say things and and let you wonder uh, what is he talking about. You know, I, this is. I'm talking about Jesus Christ. I'm talking about the Savior. Now hear me. I don't care how innovative we get. We cannot get so innovative that we rule out the Savior. Jesus is himself. Now, 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 now hear me. This is important. Uh, we, we got people that are spiritual. I'm not religious. I'm spiritual. Now, we're going to have to scrutinize that as well. Because we have, we have found ourselves in places that put us in jeopardy of winning. Because we're trusting in something because we didn't scrutinize what that something was. Mm -hmm. Now, we got people saying that they're, they're, they're spiritual. But my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and his righteousness. Now, now why God wants us to understand this is because we got people saying they're spiritual. We say it all over TV. I'm spiritual. Now, the Bible says this in 1 John 4, verse number 1. It says, but love, believe not every spirit. It just said something. It just said something. It says there are people that stand there spiritual, but you can't believe every spirit because they might be spiritual, but that does not mean that they're relating anything to Jesus Christ, hmm. the method of God's intervention. That doesn't mean that they're saying that they are part of what God is doing. They might be spiritual, but that does not mean. Now, this says this. It goes on down in the text to say this, that every spirit that confess Jesus Christ, then that's a true spirit. If you're not confessing him, if you're certain circling around the wagon and trying to put some other things in place. It's not the spirit that you should be trusted. So they might be spiritual, but they don't have the power of a risen Christ behind what they're saying. And I want to be sure that we know that I have the power of a risen Christ. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and his righteousness. His righteousness is, gives me the right mm -hmm. To live and and to speak and to and and to operate in power. So here it is again, Second Corinthians one nineteen, Second Corinthians one verse chapter one verse nineteen twenty. I'm gonna read that into your hearing, but this is a powerful season that is coming. Watch what it says. It it says, for the Son of God, that's Jesus again, for the Son of God, Jesus Christ, who was preached among you by us, even by me and Silvanus and Timothy, was not yea and nay. Was not yea and nay. But in him was yea. Listen to the text. For in him was yea. 20 verse says, For all the promises of God in him are yea. For all the promises of God in him are yea. And in him, amen, unto the glory of God by us. In other words, listen to what Paul said. All the promises of God through him are yea. If you are getting some, some, some places where uh, you are speaking and you don't see power, perhaps you are not putting your trust in the right one. Mm. In him. He produces the power for living. I want to be a very clear witness to the one that saved my life. Mm -hmm. I want to be a witness there. I want to be no more, no, no more denying it. No more denying it. It is him that gives us the power to live. It is him that saves us. So it is him and through his finished work that we have life and it more abundantly. The enemy is trying to push a gender where we are trusting in ourselves and in other methods. But here's what Paul said. For all God's promises, all the promises of God in him are yea. Mm -hmm. And in him, amen, unto the glory of the Father. Now, I want you to hear this very clear. I want you to hear this very clearly. Because God, again, wants you to be a witness in your area of expert expertise. Mm -hmm. God is going to open a door and he's going to send you in, but he says he want to give he he wants you to give him glory. Yes. If you give him glory, he's going to give you victory. Mm. That's a fair exchange. You give him glory, he gives you victory. The victories that have been absent in your life is, is a, as a consequence of you not giving him glory. You might have thought that you were, but you got to give him glory. You got to give God glory through his, the finished work of his son. My hope is built on nothing less. And Jesus' blood is right to this. You are about to see a turnaround of epic proportions in your life. A turnaround. I speak it on your life right, right now. now. A, turn, a turnaround. A turnaround. You are the agent that God has been waiting yes. for this particular dispensation. He's sending you in so that you can be the witness and give him glory. And you're going to have victory in your life like never before. Peace is coming to your process now because you are again, you again, you again recognizing the peace giver. 
Thank you so much, Pastor Joe Tallamore. Go it's ahead. It's like ahead. He, he's, uh, he is endowing you with the Holy Ghost to speak with other tongues. Yes. To go to the boardroom, to go to the lab, to go into the offices and yeah. speak a tongue that they understand. Yes. Speaking with other. With other tongues. On the, it's the day of Pentecost. Yes. It's the, uh, listen to me. The, the God that you serve is not trying to isolate you from the world. He's not. He's actually trying to push you there. He actually wants you to go there. And he want, as she said, to give you the language how to deal with people that need you right now. They need they need you in the Christ that lives in you. You are the only one, the Christ that lives in you. I want to say it again, and I want to say it with all clarity, because the enemy's got an agenda. Hear me now. We have gotten caught up into all these theories. Wherever the there is an absolute truth, there's conspiracy theory, and there is superstition. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and his righteousness. If you are confused about this, perhaps you never had the relationship that you thought you had, and now you're letting enemies, your borders are not guarded, mm -hmm. and the enemy is coming in, and He's come shifting on, your on, priorities and he's setting you up for a fall because he does not want you to know that you have been sifted of your power until it's the day of challenge and you reach for it and it's gone. Mm. That's his design. So my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood. I make no make no mistake about it. Make no mistake. I'm not trying to get popular enough for you to see me and I have to tone down what my belief is. I'm not toning down. As a matter of fact, I'm turning up. Because what God is presenting in this next season, in this shift, there's a shift that's happening. There's a change in language. There's a change in the vernacular. God says again, watch, he's, he's sending opportunities for the people that believe in the blood to stand again and stand in power. And again, the reason why he endows us with his power is because he wants us to, he wants us to speak another language. What language is that? That's a language to go into strange Strange men, as it was in the day of Pentecost, Come as on. you said, in the, the day of Pentecost was, the, was a moment to speak in other tongues. And in and, 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 and Mark chapter 16, he says, new tongues, new tongues and other tongues. These was not unknown tongues. Come on. These are tongues of men that need to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ. And now he's given me a tongue to be able to witness to them. Yeah. We're in a shifting season. We're in a shifting season. And for those that are real about this and ready to walk into this ministry again, God is going to endow you. He's not trying to separate you from the secular. He's trying to push you back in it because he wants to speak there. But he says, I need people in this opportunity that are not ashamed. That, that are not ashamed, that are not ashamed to, to proclaim my name in a season that is called a season of politics where we are leaving the Christ out. This is, we are leaving his name out. We're looking for opportunities. We want the glory that he, he, he presents, but we don't want to call his name. Mm -hmm. We don't want to call it. We don't, we don't, we don't, we don't want to call it. I'm, I'm so reminded. I'm so reminded uh, uh, of the scripture in Isaiah chapter four, Isaiah chapter four. It talks about uh, interesting revelation. His revelation, not, not actual is a revelation to us. It says in that day, mm -hmm. in that day, there will be seven women mm -hmm. For one man in that day, mm -hmm. seven women for one man. I need to probably, I need to probably look at that. I need to look at that. In that day, there will be seven women. Let me, let me read it. Let me, let me actually get the text. I need y'all to stay with me now because I'm sharing some revelation here. It says, in that day, seven women shall take hold of one man. Now, interesting. I need to show you this. Seven, seven women shall take hold of one man saying, we will eat our our own bread our and own wear our stuff. own apparel. Oh. Listen to that, what the Bible says. I'm reading from the King James Version. Look at it. Look at it. That's why Revelation is so important. It says, and in that day, seven women shall take hold of one man saying, we all, we will eat our own bread and wear our own apparel. Hear that? Eat our own bread, wear our own apparel. They're talking, seven women talking to one man. One man. We'll eat our own food and wear our own apparel. Only let us be called by thy name. Hear me. Only let us be called. The requirement, all we, only thing we want from you is your name uh, to take away our reproach. Mm -hmm. We don't want to be out here presented as a husbandless wife or a, a manless woman. Now, watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Now, 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 when you look at that in spiritual connotation, here it is. If you go to Revelations chapter number one, let me unpack it because this is important. 
It says, it says Jesus, he is the he is the one. He is the one Christ, and he's telling John to speak to the seven churches. Seven churches, mm -hmm. one man. Now we know that the church is the bride of Christ. Mm -hmm. One man speaking to seven churches. So the bride of Christ is is the like like Isaiah say seven women to one man. Now here's what the women said to the one man. Now we got to look at it in spiritual terms. Here's what the church, the seven churches, is saying to the one Christ. We will su supply our own food. Mm -hmm. We we'll, what when we have church, we'll say what we want to say. We will wear our own clothing. We'll do our own thing. The only thing we want from you is to keep your name. We want to be called by your name so that we won't come under reproach. Mm -hmm. We love the advantages of your name. In other words, but we don't want none of the criteria that your name uh, uh, demands. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm read it again because this is powerful. This is powerful. Here it is. Isaiah chapter 4. It says, in that day, what day? Today. 2020, March number 4, 2020, in that day, seven women shall take hold of one man, saying, we will eat our own bread. Listen to what text said. And wear our own apparel. Now, bread is the spiritual food. Uh, clothing is the spiritual attire that we must wear to qualify ourselves as a kept woman. Hear me now. Hear me now. As a kept woman. So, Isaiah 4, verse 1. And in that day... Seven women shall take hold of one man. I love revelation. I love when God gives revelation. Now, seven women shall take hold of one man, saying we will eat our own bread. In other words, what comes out of our mouth, what we feed and what we're eating, we'll determine that ourselves. And it says we'll wear our own apparel. The requirements of spiritual uh, uh, clothing that we'll put on, we'll supply that. But we need you. Listen to what the text said. Eat our own bread and wear our own pair. Only let us be called by your name. Only thing we want is your name. Wow. We want to keep your name on our marquee. Watch this. By your name to take away our reproach. Now, here it is. Revelations again. Here it is talking about one man that's, that stands in the middle of the seven churches. That's Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Now, he's going through each church and telling each church, I have problem with this. Mm -hmm. In other words, let me correct you, I know you are saying that you want my name. You don't want what I'm trying to give you to eat. You don't want the spiritual requirement that I'm trying to tell you to put on the spiritual suit. Only thing you want is to keep my name to take away the reproach. You like the advantages. You like the 501c3s that come with my name. But you don't want to follow my commands and my prompts. Wow. He's talking today. He's talking to 2020. So that's why we say we say, and we say it very proudly and boastfully, our hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and his righteousness. Thanks be unto God. Thanks be unto God, who is the Father of our Lord and Savior, Jesus, of our Lord and Savior. We want to know him as a Savior because that's the work he done. But we refuse him the opportunity to be our Lord when he can command our actions. Mm. Two different things. Him being our Savior is what he did at the cross. Now he says, I've redeemed you. Now I want to be your Lord. I want to instruct you after I have redeemed you. I want to give you instruction. I want to tell you where to go, what to do, what to say, because there's people that I'm trying to reach out to that I need a proper witness that is saying, I've sold out to what you said. Now this is an unpopular message, mm. but it's the truth anyway. It's the truth anyway. And so now here it is. In this season that is very volatile, in this season that we are seeing and hearing so many things, in this season that the enemy is trying to take over, take control of the mouth of the preacher, in this season that things have gotten so progressive, now I, I'm a man of progression. I'm a man that believe God. I, I believe in progression. But we can progress as much as we want, but we don't change God's plan in our process of being progressive. He still got a plan, and he's saying, now I need people that are ready to uh, uh, uh push my plan and I'm going to endow you with power. I'm going to endow you to speak to places that men have not spoken to. I need an agent in this season that can speak my word and be very clear in revelation. Mm -hmm. This is a time that God needs his voice to ring louder in the very political season when we don't know what to believe in. We are thinking that everything is hinging on who we vote on and put in the office. Now voting is a right and a privilege that we all should have taken advantage 
percentage of. Mm. But at the end of the day, if there's no people that understand God's revelation and plan, we're going to be in trouble. We're going to be in trouble because God is shifting this thing to the place where back in scripture, when the king needed an answer, he called for the prophets. Now the prophets are going to the kings. Mm -hmm. Well, God says, I'm switching again, and I'm setting up people. You might not have notoriety, but they know when you speak a word, it's going to come to pass because you're endorsed by the one that endorses. But my life has got to be conducive to him speaking to me so that in the enemy don't have the power to influence what I think. we got to be very careful in this. So my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and his righteousness. I dare not trust. I, that's a dare. I dare not trust. Sweetest friend. But holy lean on Jesus' name and what that produces. Because in his name, yes. we're trying to figure out how do we reach the millennials? How do we reach the flower chair? How do we reach this generation? The Bible says very clearly that every knee shall bow. Every tongue shall confess that at the name of Jesus. So there's a solution that is already written in for every problem that we face. So now it's time to advance in that. He says, if you give me glory, I'm going to give you victory. Are you ready for victory? Then he's, he said, I'm ready to come into agreement. Now, now watch this. I speak peace in a very volatile season. I speak peace in this very volatile season. I speak peace. Um, I, I want to speak peace before you and the, the system decide who is going to be the candidates for the next president. Okay. I speak peace right now because you already got the master of the universe already on your side. So peace comes before it's determined if if if, if this one going to be in office or that one's going to be in office. That's the wrong place to put your trust in. You should put your trust in the one that holds the world in the palm of his hand. You should put your trust in the one that created your life and says, I know you. I ordained you. Now get to know me and get to know what I want you to do. Because once you get on the trail of my desire for you, then you'll see all the blessings that come with your obedience. I'm speaking to somebody. I'm speaking to somebody. Now is the time to figure out. To come before him in communion and say, what is it that you are saying to me? What are you saying to me? So I don't get caught up into all the volatile thinking of the world right now. The world is in trouble because of the thoughts of the world. And now he says, I want to give you peace. I want to read something. Philippians chapter 4, verse number 7. Philippians 4, verse number 7. And the peace of God. 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 The peace of God. Which... Pass it all understanding and the peace of God. Now, now, when does the peace of God apply? Mm -hmm. The peace of God is everlasting to everlasting because if God is Alpha and Omega, that means that all parts of God is everlasting. And so if I'm in a time where I don't see peace, it's because I'm not connected to God. That's mm -hmm. what it's saying. And the peace of God. If God has been in existence, then his peace has been in existence. Mm -hmm. He didn't take away his peace. He says, I, I have the peace. I have the peace that surpasses all understanding. What does that mean? That in spite of what you're seeing and what you're hearing and what disease and what what what's next on the horizon, I will give you peace in the midst of all of that. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, shall keep your heart and mind through who? Christ, Christ Jesus. Jesus. So my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and his righteousness. The foundation is already set. Why are you shifting foundations? Why are you going into all these different ideas? Why are you trying to trust in something brand new? Why are we going to try to figure out what has already been figured out? It's already figured out. It, the, the challenge now is not trying to shift your foundation. Your challenge now is getting understanding of the foundation that is already set. There's no other foundation that can be laid. So if you're having a problem, figure out the foundation that is already set. Not shift foundation. Not go to different ideas and different thoughts and, and alternative uh, uh, methods. Go back to the one and figure out. Because the peace of God, which is eternal to eternal. Peace of God, which passes all understanding. What understanding do it surpass? It surpasses your understanding. You have peace and you won't even understand why you have it. But it's because you're connected to the one that gives peace. My God. 
you have peace that you don't understand. Mm -hmm. I should be because you'll be around a bunch of people that are stressed out. And you'll be peaceful and you'll be trying to, I don't understand why I'm peaceful and everybody else around me is, is dying. You'll be just like the, the young man that's at the pool that Jesus encountered and said, will thou be made whole? Well, I can't because everybody around me is sick. I don't care about everybody around you being sick. I'm asking you, will you make a decision? To be whole, if you make a decision to be whole, let's go for whole. Take up your bed. Let's walk. Let's walk. It's your walk season. Get ready to get up. Get ready to get up. My hope is built on nothing less. I'm saying it enough that if you come in here late, you won't get a misunderstanding of what I'm talking about. My hope is built on nothing less, nothing less. than Jesus' blood and his righteousness. I'm happy. Mm. I'm happy because I know now, no matter what goes on, he's got me. He's got me. He's got you too. He's got you too. Now, let's go into Colossians. I spent 30 minutes on that. I spent 30 minutes on that. It was good. That's 30 minutes. I'm going to spend the rest of my life on telling people that there's a Savior that's ready to save. There's a Savior that's ready to take, take on your issue. He's ready. Will you allow him? Will you allow him to take on your issue? Will you allow him? Now, Colossians uh, chapter 1. I want to start at verse 15. I want to start at verse 15. Share me, share me, share me. Verse number 15. Share this. I, I want to open up something. I want to give you the reasons why the enemy is so uh, adamant in this season. <laughs> How he's trying to bring confusion to, to our young men and young women. How he's trying to disrupt some things in their life. I want to, I want to read something here. Let me, let me go to Colossians. I'm, 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 you know, I could quote scripture, but I, I like, you know, I'm adamant now in this season about making sure I don't miss one word. One word changes the whole thing. One word changes the whole meaning. Let me go here. Word, well, word. Colossians 1, uh, verse number 15. Now watch this. We're talking about Jesus again. Stay with me now because this is going to be very important. I want to build your faith in that that is solid, that's unmovable, that is ready. I want to share some things. I want to share some of the tactics of the enemy. We want to we want to unpack it and we want to tear that foundation down that the enemy has built. I want to, I want to share now 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 it's uh what I say verse number fifteen. I did thirteen fourteen on Monday. I want to do verse number fifteen. Now we're talking about Jesus Christ again. Here it is. It says, "Who is the image of the invisible God?" Hmm. Who is the image of the invisible God? I need you to hear me and I need you to stay with me because I'm going to bring some revelation here. Who is the image of the invisible God? The firstborn of every creature. Now hear that. He is the image of the invisible God. The firstborn, hear what the Bible says, of every creature, a creation or a creature. In other words, he's what God looks like. Here it is. Jesus Christ is what God looked like. Now, I have never seen in the entirety of my life how believers that have been brought up as believers can allow somebody to walk into their life and completely rob them of scripture. Completely. Or, or cause them to start wondering. It's because our foundation have not been sure. He want to show up the foundation. So the text says there here that who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. Now, here's, here's one of the, 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 the major destructive tools of the enemy. This scripture is so good that the enemy will take hold of this scripture and tell you it'll paint a picture. <laughs> It's been, it's, it's, this is a tactic that has happened over the generations. So when we read scripture, we see pictures of someone that was, uh, 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 had the resources to mass produce scripture. Okay. And so if you have the resources and you put out a product, right? Anybody that put out a product, I need you to hear me now. Anybody that put out a product, since you had the resources to put out the product, what the product the, the images inside the product, you are going to influence the images. Okay. <laughs> that does not mean, now, 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 now watch. Okay, there's several musicians. Here, here's an analogy. I got to put it like, there's musicians and they put out a product. They might do the same song, same song. They might reproduce a song. And, and so it might be Jack that did the song over here. And so when Jack did the song, the image you see on Jack's rendition of the song is if Jack is a Chinese, you'll see a Chinese image on the 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 production of the work, right? Mm -hmm. Right? 
And so when you do the work and Jack tells you that you doing the same work that I done. And so you need to put my image on the work. You said, no, Jack. No, Jack. You wrong, Jack. Okay. You, you, Jack, you got it all mixed up. I'm doing the rendition of this because we are all qualified because it is in public domain. All right. What your work was is a derivative of what was in public domain. Now, I'm going to do the same thing with uh, my image on there because I'm doing my rendition of it. Same song, same lyrics, okay. but it's two different characters that's doing it. Here's been the problem, and I needed you to see this like this. The scripture is given by God. Mm -hmm. It just so happened the ones that you read was mass produced by somebody that put their images in there. Mm -hmm. And so when you see a white Jesus, you can't say the whole scripture is wrong because of the person that put their rendition, put what was in their mind. Mm -hmm. You do it and you put a black one in there. Yeah. And if there are some Mongolians, is that the word? Yes, sir. You put that, if you Chinese, you put that in there. But don't never disqualify the word because you see an image from somebody that mass produced something. Uh -huh. My God. Don't let them tell you that it's not. There's a blue-eyed Jesus. Mm. Well, your Jesus might not be blue-eyed. Please hear me. This has been one of the greatest tools of the enemy to fight our mind, to disregard where our foundation is, to disregard our foundation because I've seen something that looked like somebody else. Mm. Well, naturally, what is going to happen if you find something good, you want to put your name on it. You want to put your image on it. You want it to represent you. So now what you do, you plagiarize it too. You put your name in it. We all are correct in it. Because now listen to me. The scripture says, who is the image of the invisible God? Now hear that. Okay. Who is the image of the re invisible God? Jesus Christ, who is the image of the invisible God? That right there, the first part of this say, God is an invisible God. In other words, God is a spirit. Mm. So, so nobody can really say definitively that he's this color or that color. We all have a right to imagine in our mind what color we want to be. And he's telling us all, it's okay. It's okay. If you need me to be black, I am black. You need me to be white, I am white. You need me to be green, I am green. And that doesn't matter what color it is. What matters is what it says. I can stand on it. So who is the image of the inv invisible God? Now, image now is just suggested something else. Image is not a color mm -hmm. or a form. Mm -hmm. Image is an action. Okay. So now it's saying Jesus, Jesus, who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. Do you hear what they're saying? So, so now watch this, watch this, watch this. So now we know in Genesis one twenty six, in Genesis, this is powerful. Right here. <laughs> in Genesis one twenty six, when God said it, in Genesis one twenty six, uh, He said we were made in God's image. Jesus gave gave us a vivid picture. Now watch this. Jesus gave us a vivid picture of what that looked like. Now He's an invisible God. God is a what? Spirit. Get this now, please. He gave us an image of God. So that means that if God is a spirit, we shouldn't be fighting over what color the image was. We should be gravitating to what Jesus actually done as opposed to what he looks like or what color he is. That's why the enemy wants us to miss it. Because it's not about what color he is. It's about what he was able to do when he was here. Mm. He's the exact image of God. In other words, image is an action word, not a picture. I, I, I always made this illustration about traveling with artists. On the stage, they had this look. They had this clothing on that had people thinking that they were something different from when the, the lights had gone down and they're back in the, in, in, in the uh, uh, dressing room. They took off all the makeup. They got everything off. They got their sweats on. They got their glasses on. You might walk up to them looking for the image that you saw and didn't even see it because you were so you were so uh, captivated on what you saw on stage. Mm -hmm. But the actual them wasn't that. Okay. And so now we know that image is not what we see with the physical. It's what the spirit is producing. And so now when it says Jesus was the exact image of an invisible God, it's trying to tell us don't look for the color. Look for the action. Mm. Look for what he done. If he walked on water, you should be walking on water. If he raised the dead, you should be trying to raise the dead. Don't be fighting over what color it was. If your family is sick, don't have an argument over ethnicity. 
Don't have no argument over what it looks like. If it has the power to heal, accept the healing. The word of God has the power to heal. The enemy is causing us to have arguments over the wrong thing. He's distracting us. So now, God is a spirit. This indicates to us that race and color isn't the main concern. Please hear me. But the power that it produces. Now, you hear me now. Important to know. In Exodus chapter uh, 33, Exodus chapter number 33, Moses asked God to show me your glory. Hmm. <laughs> Let me go there. Let me go there. I need to, I'm still, I'm a, I'm a teacher today. I'm teaching. I'm, I'm, I'm going to teach this. Exodus uh, 33, uh, chapter, I mean, verse number 18. Listen to this. Listen to this. Listen to this. Here's Moses. Moses make a request. He says, he says, now God, and, and he said, I beseech thee, show me the glory. Now, 19 verse, here's God speaking. And he said, I will make all my goodness pass before thee. This is God answering Moses. He says, let me see your glory. He says, I'll make all my goodness pass before thee. And I will proclaim the name of the Lord before thee. And I will, I will be gracious. I will be gracious to whom I will be gracious and will show mercy on whom I will show mercy. When I read that, God is something else. You ask him for one thing and he gives you so much more. He says, I'll, not only will I do this, but I'm going to show mercy. to." He says, don't forget down the line, you're going to need to remember, I show grace and mercy to whom I desire. Okay. I'm going to show my glory. Now watch what it says here. The 20th verse says, and he said, thou canst not see my face, for there shall no man see me and live. 21st verse said, and the Lord said, behold, there is a place by me that thou shalt stand upon a rock. Hear what he says here. Stand upon a rock. 22nd verse said, and it shall come to pass while my glory passeth by. Mm. By my, while my glory pass by, that I will put thee in a cleft of a rock and will cover thee with my hand while I pass by. In other words, he says, Moses, I'm going to set you in the, in the cleft of a rock and I'm going to put my hand over your face. I'm coming by you. <laughs> I'm coming by and pass by. 23rd verse says, and I will take away my hand and thou shalt see my back part, mm -hmm. but my face shall not be seen. This is such an interesting passage of scripture because Moses in his covenant asked God to see his glory. Mm -hmm. God said, you can't see me face to face, mm -hmm. but I will pass by you. And when I get by you, you'll see my glory. In other words, I show you my history. Mm. I'll show you the works I've already done. That should give you an indication of who I am. I pass by you and show you my history. Now, now, what is interesting about that? This is Moses asking. Show me, show me your glory. This is Moses asking. Now, now I'm gonna show you something here. This is why my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and his righteousness. Because Moses, in his covenant, asked God to see his glory, his face, and God says, I cannot show you that. No man can see it and live. But we discover something in a New Testament and in a new covenant, the one that I live in right now. Uh, John, St. John, chapter 1, verse number 14 says this, says this, says this. Here's what it said. And the word was made flesh mm -hmm. and dwelt among us and we beheld his glory. Listen to what take that. And we beheld his glory. And we beheld his glory. The glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Do you hear? Do you hear what he says? He says, This great, this glory. Now, what God had told Moses, you cannot, in his covenant, you cannot see my face and live. But what God is saying in the new covenant, the only way you will live is that you see by faith, mm. is that you seek the faith, that you seek the glory. Now, now watch this, watch this. Now, watch what the text says. The text says, and the word was made flesh and it dwelt among us. Mm -hmm. That's interesting because if I read Genesis, Genesis says something more powerful. It uh -huh. says, it says, in the beginning was the word. Uh-huh. <laughs> In the beginning was the word. What did you say? What are you saying, Pastor? So, in other words, we understand that in the beginning, Genesis one, in the beginning was the word. The word was God. The word was with God. And so, we know that in the twenty sixth verse, when God says, "Let us make man in our image," we know exactly who He was talking to now, because the word became flesh. And so, He says, "When you see the image of Jesus, you are watching the image of Me." This is why the enemy is attacking Him. Him because that's where the power, that's where the image is. What he done is what you should be doing, mm -hmm. what we should be doing. Are you hearing me? So the enemy comes in and say, let me fight this so that they'll never 
They'll never expect. They'll never. They'll never even want to look toward the image. They'll never even want to accept what is privy to them. I need to read something here. What I want to read? Second Corinthians. Second Corinthians, uh, verse number, chapter number four, verse number, uh, uh, chapter number three. Let me read this. I know this is a lot of information. Uh, first Corinthians, Second Corinthians three eighteen. But we all. Now hear me now. But we all, you and me, but we all with open face beholding as in a glass the glory of God, mm. the glory of the Lord, are changed, listen to what this says now, are changed into the same image from glory to glory. Here it is, from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. Now watch this, Moses, again, Exodus 33 says, Lord, show me your glory. And God says, no man can see my face and live. I'm going to hide you in the cleft of a rock and I'm going to pass by you and show you my history. Mm. That should excite you. But now in this covenant, in John 1, 14, it says this in this covenant, we have got to behold the glory of God. The word became flesh and we beheld the glory. This in, in the old covenant, if we saw his glory, we would die. In the new covenant, we got to see his face to live. And so he's presenting. And so now the Bible says this in 2 Corinthians 3.18. But we all, now listen, he said we all better seek this glory. This is why the enemy has an indictment against scripture and Jesus Christ himself. Because this is the exact image of God. This is where the power is, is, is pushed. This is where the power resides. Now again. Again, don't let the enemy fight your mind and show you and say, well, that's a white man. Again, whenever there is a work done, mm -hmm. the work done. Now, the word of God is public domain. Anybody can use it. We all can use it. And, of course, if there's somebody that have the wherewithal to mass produce something, and this Bible was mass produced by somebody, hear what I'm saying? Hear what I'm saying? And if it's mass produced, of course, if they are... The one that produced the work, they're gonna put their images in it. Yeah. So what you do is when you mass produce it, you put your image in it. Mm -hmm. It the image is not a a physical thing. It's it's a spiritual thing. If he is the express image of God, God is a spirit. God is a spirit. So it leaves it to our imagination. If I want him to be black, then God says, go ahead. You have the liberty. If you are a derivative of. Mm -hmm. If you if he needs to be green, go ahead. Make him green. But don't throw away my word because you seen somebody put what they wanted it to be in. You take the word. You change the image in your mind. Please hear me now. Please hear me. Change image. So now we all. With open face, behold, as in a glass, the glory of the Lord are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit. Do you know how powerful that text is? Now, please hear me. Let me let me, let me share something with you. Let me share something with you. Here's what text is saying. Here's what text is saying. When you look in the mirror, you shouldn't be seeing yourself. When you look in the mirror, you should be seeing the glory. You should behold the glory of God. Now, what does this suggest? For those of you that have done something wrong and you tarnish your image, he says, now I'm going to give you an opportunity to look again at an image that is not tarnished. That an image that if you can, by faith, look at the image, you're going to be changed. If you can view what God has done, this is why the enemy's trying to take it away. This is why he's, uh, he's, he's, he's painting the picture that you don't need to be looking to him. You don't need to look. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and his righteousness. That's why the enemy don't. That's why this political season. That's why we have every kind of onslaught against the word and the 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 the, 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 the whole slave thing is coming up again because the enemy do not want us to gravitate to scripture where the foundation is. Mm -hmm. This is this is invading the body of Christ. This is invading the body of Christ. Right. This right here is invading the body of Christ. We have more messages on racism than we do on the glory of God. Mm -hmm. It's because the invasion of what God said. If we could get people to point again to the one that saves, if we can get the quality message to stop talking about what happened and what, as opposed to what God is trying to do, now we can find ourselves, we will find ourselves in the position that we're in right now. Right now. And so it's political. It's racism. And that's the enemy's attempt to get us off focus of the blessing that God is trying to push right now. There's a blessing that God is trying to give to his people right now. But if we are so caught up uh, uh, in, 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 into racism and all of these things that this season always produces, 
We're going to miss a visitation. We're going to miss a visitation. We're missing a visitation because our minds have been clogged. We cannot miss this visitation season. We cannot miss this visitation season. Fighting unnecessary causes. Fighting unnecessary causes. This is not an eye for an eye season. That's a tactic of the enemy. That is a tactic of an enemy, and we're getting caught in. There is a righteousness. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and his righteousness. There is a righteousness that will take away your right. What does that mean? When you want to retaliate, when you want to fight a, a, a fight for an eye for an eye, there's a righteousness that will stand. Now, you're going to you're gonna get criticized for it. You're going to get criticized because you have chosen that if God told me to love my enemy, as it is in Scripture, I ain't loving. We think that now we got a good cause uh, uh, enough to take away what Scripture says. Mm -hmm. That's causing you to be a slave. Scripture has never said that you were a slave. It was the misinterpretation of Scripture that told you. I, it's interesting. I'm going to tell you something that's very interesting to me. There are people that are tell me that you're a slave because I read the Scripture. They, they just say, it. if you read that, you're a slave. And I say, why? I never read that. No, you are. You are. You're a slave if you read it. I never read that. They, they say, no, you, 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 you're mistaken. You're a slave if you read it. Well, I never read that. I never read it. Yes, you are. You are. And I said, where you get that from? Because that is a, I'm, 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 I'm messing with some sacred cows. That, that, that's a white man's book. This is not a white man's book. This is, all scripture is given by the inspiration of the Spirit of God. Yes. Your, your misinterpretation of somebody putting something out that put their spin on it and you got caught up in the spin might be your problem, but it's not the word of God. Now you need to get revelation. So the people that tell you that you are crazy because you read it and you're being influenced are actually the ones that are being influenced mm -hmm. because they are saying that it caused you to be a slave. How do you know? Because that's what I heard them say. You the victim of what okay. you heard. So matter. I'm not. I read it and it didn't say it. It says I'm above and not beneath. It said I'm the head and not the tail. It told me that very clearly. Yeah. It says it over and over again. I'm the victor. I'm winning. I'm winning. I'm more than a gunger. I believe that. It never told me I had to be subjected to anybody. It never said that. It said serve it, obey your masters. We talked that last night. That's what some of the, because of our, our dynamics, we thought that the Bible was saying that we should go and find a white master to be served. That's not what the text is saying to me. People, please hear me. You follow people that have mastered something. If you have mastered something, then of course, I would I would humbly submit. That's the whole premise behind college, right? Mm -hmm. Is we pay tuition, $30,000, $40,000 a year to send our children to a master. Mm -hmm. Every time we hear the word master, we think slavery. No! That's the dynamic that is being pushed because God is trying to tell you something. If you find somebody that has mastered something and you see that it makes your life better, it brings you into a position where you can take advantage of, of course you want to find somebody that's got one that is a master. It's not a slave thing. It's people that are knowledgeable of their craft and you can learn to make your life better. Wow. We have missed so many. I need to I need to end this thing, man. I'm at 12, 57. I'm going to tell you the story that's very powerful. I'm going to tell you a story that's very powerful. Very powerful. Now watch this very powerful story. This is after Super Tuesday and election. I want to show you something. In uh, Book of Genesis, we know the story of, of this young man by the name of Nimrod. <laughs> Very powerful story. You can read that uh, Genesis 11. Nimrod was a, 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 the great great grandson of, of, of Noah in Scripture, and so uh, uh, he came from the Ham lineage. Right, sis. Now, now Nimrod was a young boy that was angry. I'm painting the picture. Nimrod was a young man that was angry. Why was he angry? The Bible calls him a mighty hunter before the Lord. That's in Genesis chapter 11, I think it is. Uh, 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 He's a mighty hunter before the Lord. Now, he was not a mighty hunter unto the Lord. Uh, he was gifted, but he didn't use his gift for God. I need you to understand that. Now, it says he was a, he was a mighty hunter, but it was not unto for God's glory, mm -hmm. in other words. As a matter of fact, he was a very uh, rebellious young man. Let me tell you why the text says he was very uh, rebellious. Because he was mad. He was mad because uh, his family had suffered loss because of a flood. This is right out of the flood of Noah. His, his family had suffered loss because, uh, because of Noah. And so he was upset 
because of his family suffering loss, that he said, I'm going to build a tower. This is all the work of Nimrod, uh, uh, one of the first mighty men, uh, mighty rulers in scripture. And he says, I'm going to build a tower. What is this tower for? This tower is to stop the gods from uh, destroying my family. This will never happen. My family won't go through this again. Stay with me now because this is going to bless somebody in a political city. So he says, I'm building a tower up into the heavens. And, and if there's a flood again, mm -hmm. uh, my family won't be affected by the flood. Now, hear me now. Hear me now. Now, when the Bible says that he was going to build a, a tower into heaven, that was not building a tower to God. Mm -hmm. It's just like if we see a uh, uh, trail, World Trade mm -hmm. Tower or the Sears Tower, they are into, into the heavens, the at, into the clouds with their height. Mm -hmm. And so Nimrod, in his rebellion, his word, his name means rebellion, a rebellion against God. And so watch this. It's going to bless somebody. And so his attempt was to build a tower that if God was angry again, and decided he was going to send a flood, he would never, his family would never have to suffer from the choice of God. Now, listen to me, listen to me very closely. Listen to me very closely. He was rebellious. He was rebellious before God. He wanted to make sure that the plight would never hit his family again at the choice of God. Okay. Now, now watch this. Now, you can tell he's angry with God because he's got a misunderstanding. Mm -hmm. Because he didn't understand what was going on. He and his generation was angry. Now, this runs parallel, please hear me, with the generations now. We are angry with something that happened before, yes. and we have declared that it won't happen again. Mm. And so our anger is against the people or the person or the thing that we thought brought the harm to our generations. Yeah, yeah. Please hear me now. So Nimrod, who was a mighty hunter before God, in rebellion to God, decided I'm going to build a tower so that if something happened, my people will not be subjected to what happened. Now listen to me. We are looking at it, the parallel in this generation. Please hear me now. And so Nimrod built this tower. What happened is Nimrod did not read because he was so mad. If the word came from the one that actually produced what I am mad at, then why should I read what he said? Same thing that has happened today. Because the enemy has caused us to believe because scripture says certain things that why should I read in scripture if the scripture is telling me I'm a slave? And if the scripture is telling me I'm a slave, then that means that the scripture is telling me that the person that put me in the slave position is my master and I never. So this generation is fighting. So as Nimrod did, he decided to build a tower to make sure that if this God decided to set a flood again, it won't affect my people because I'm angry because my people suffer. They'll never have to do that again. Mm -hmm. So now I'm building a tower. Now watch what the text said. Nimrod did not read in the scripture. He took somebody else's word for it. How do you know? Because God promised his great great grandfather Noah. He says, I'm putting a rainbow in the sky and this will never happen, never again. happen again. And so, so much is happening in defense of something because we don't know what the promises are. You're fighting against a promise that have already been told you, but you won't listen. So the enemy says, I don't want you to go hear what God is saying. I want you to take somebody else's word so you can be able to get a misunderstanding. And so you start trying to be the antidote. Hear me now. This generation is parallel in the generation. And so what God says is you don't understand. Now listen to me very closely. Listen to me very closely. God is saying you don't understand what I've already promised. I already promised your generations that it wouldn't happen again. I already told them that I'm going to bless them, but you haven't read it. So you're building something in, in defiance of me, and I'm not going to let it work. So here it is. Nimrod's got all of his people in this tower to prevent Mm. What 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 happened before from happening again? Yeah. And so God says, that's not what I told you to do. Mm. Hear me now, 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 because this is going to be important. And so what he does, God goes down and says, since you don't know my promise, and all of y'all are inside this tower, I've got to dis I've got to make y'all leave this tower. What does he do? He confused the language. Hear me now, because here's a, here comes the revelation. He confuses their language. It, 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 he calls the, them to babble. Yeah. That's why we call it the Tower of Babel, because it was the same people that had a confused language. They couldn't communicate with each other. We are the same people, but we can't communicate. Now, here's what I need you to understand real quick. How can...
in this people have the ingenuity and the gift enough to build a tower. The Bible says that they had mortar. That was an intervention. That was a witty invention. Mm -hmm. So these people that built this tower were smart people. They were people of ingenuity. They were people that were gifted. They were a tribe of people that were inside the tower that had built a tower. But here's what they were void of. Understanding. You're building a tower against God because you don't know his word. You're trying to protect your generations about something that is happening. And so what God does, he confuses the language. Wow. I got two people, a whole group of people, a whole ethnic group that don't know the promises of God. So I have to confuse that language. This is a gifted people. This is a people of ingenuity. But they cannot ever work together again because they're spending so much time in prevention that they won't let the spirit of invention Come over there right now. Same, same thing that happened today. We're spending so much time in preventing what happened in the generations that we don't spend enough time hearing God's intervention. He's trying to end. So now, this is why we never can work together mm. because we're so trying to prevent. And God says, I have to cause you to be in Babel. Y'all can't understand each other. This, I always wonder, Lord, why can't we get together? He says, you're spending too much time trying to prevent what I already promised you wouldn't happen again. Mm. That's been the enemies do. You're spending too much time trying to prevent what happened in the generations. And since you're spending so much time trying to happen, trying to prevent what happened in the generations, you don't only listen to me to give you innovation. Mm. You're trying to prevent the generation that you can't go in. And so smart, gifted people can't work together. They always come up in confusion. There always is a babble because we're trying to prevent. There always is a babble. Anytime you got money, I got money, let's do something. The confusion going to come in because what we're trying to do is prevent something that God already promised us would never happen again anyway. Ain't that amazing? So it... This affects the generation. What we try to prevent, God says that wouldn't, and we create another dilemma. What is the dilemma? You'll never be able to work together because when you come together, you're trying to prevent something that I already promised you was over. I don't know the word of God. Let's pray together. Father, thank you so much for this word. Thank you so much for your revelation. Thank you so much for bringing us in the place where we see your word again. We trust your word again. In this very volatile time, very volatile season, we need to hear you. Bottom line, my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and his righteousness. Lord, you have the answer. You are the answer. You want to be the answer. So let us trust you again. In spite of all the new interventions and all of the new ideas, let us stay with the foundation that is sure. That's your word. Your word said it. We got to believe it and allow you to take care of us. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, God, for this word on today. In Jesus' name. We've got to hear again. We've got to hear again. It is crucial. It is crucial that we hear the word of the Lord again. We are not slaves. Listen, we are not timid people. So many people think, oh, if I do that, I'm going to be timid. People are going to take advantage of me. Please hear me. You're hearing out of a whole old understanding. God is trying to put you in places where his power can be shown strong. God is trying to put you in places now that you got understanding. You go in fighting too much thinking, I'm going to let you know you don't have no advantage of me. God told you that before you went in there. Oh, let them think. You just go in with the power of God behind you. Mm. So, so we're in a season, man. That we got to hear again. It's, it's, it's crucial. We're in a crucial body of Christ. This is crucial. I'm telling you. The change that we desire. Is going to come through the church. It's going to come through God's body. Hear me. Hear me. It's going to come. Through. That's why it's so adamant. That we get ourselves together. We get in truth. Because we won't see the change. We won't see the change. Until the body of Christ. The church. It's going to be produced. No other entity have the power to change. That's why Ephesians 3, verse 17 says, Now unto the intent, God's intention, is that the principalities, the powers, understand his manifold wisdom through the church. That's why it's so difficult right now. That's why it's so difficult for us to come together. Because the enemy knows that when the body of Christ come in full strength, yeah. 
That's what communion is. It's pieces coming back together. In the communion, Jesus says, this is my body broken. He gave it to 12 different entities. And then he says, as often as you do this, do it in remembrance. Mm -hmm. In other words, remember me. Uh, well, remember, each member. That's why it says we're a body. Each of you bring your part back together so that you will be a full body in full strength. And that's where the enemy is under that's the foot that the enemy is under. This is why we got to walk in truth. This is why we got to come in truth. All right, I'm done. <laughs> Go to my YouTube page, Pastor G at Network of Believers. Pastor G at Network of Believers. Pastor G at Network of Believers. That's my YouTube page. Go and subscribe. This video will be up. Yesterday's video, Monday's video, all videos for the last two years are up. This is a crucial time. This is a crucial time. God want to get glory out of your life. He wants you to be a vessel that he uses on your job. But you got to know who you are. This is not halfway, uh, partial, three-fourths of the way. He wants all of you so that he can get the glory out of you. That's the only way. This is not compromise time. This is for him. There's a language that God's got for you to speak to your secular application. You, we should not separate the sacred and the secular. God mm -hmm. is the God of both. He needs you in your devotion time to have a download that you can send to the secular world because they need you. you need, you're need. going to have to speak something to people in this next season that they don't even know that they need. But you're the one that's got the spirit that discerns. You're the one hearing God. You're going to have to speak some things that people don't think they need to hear. You're going to have to say it because you are the agent that brings change. You got the prophesy prophet. You got the prophesy prophet. If you want to see it happen in the earth, it cannot happen until the authorized voice is saying, prophesy prophet, we out of here. We <laughs> out of here. Holla. Thank everybody that came in. Pastor Vaughn, thank you so much. Pastor Marissa, Pastor Joel, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Pastor... Uh, Joe Tallamore, thank you, thank you. Ebony Washington, thank you so much. Uh, Mom, thank you so much. Uh, Pastor Dwayne Dawes, blessings, man. Blessings to you, brother. Sarah uh, 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 Everson, Sarah Everson, thank you so much. Uh, Diane Cunningham, blessings to you, Diane. Uh, and, and James, blessing to both of you guys. Uh, who else is in this house? Angela Sally, thank you so much. Thank you so much, Namisha Hartwick. Thank you so much, uh, Chosen Allen Tate. Thank you so much, uh, Apostle Kirkland Cross. Thank you, thank you, Ronnie Glenn. Thank you, thank you, thank you, uh, Pastor Deidre. Thank you so much, Apostle Don Delaware. Thank you so much, uh, Walter Jones. Blessings, man. Uh, who else is in here? Uh, Pastor Nolan, Bishop Cedric Beard. Blessings, man. Uh, uh, Joyce. Thank you so much, Joe Scott. Thank you so much. Uh, C. Nichols Stanton, thank you so much. Tammy, thank you so much. Tracy Onassis, hey, thank you so much. Jones L. Woods, thank you so much. Uh, Laura, thank you, Laura. Uh, Apostle Cynthia Austin Poe, thank you so much. Uh, Kimberly Key Bell, Candace Johnson, Jennifer, Jennifer Williams, Apostle Victor Wynn, thank you so much. Evie Cook, bless us. Uh, Sister Sheila's in the house. Katrina's in the house. Blessings to all of you guys. Blessings. Tori Delaney and blessings. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. We are blessed to be in the house. It's time that we get to get ourselves together. Amen. Amen. amen and amen. 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 and amen, Pastor DJ. All right. We're out of here. Blessings. For those you want to give, she's already put the, the address in. Well, hey, go watch this again and share this. Seems like our numbers fall when we get deep into that. But it's all good. It's all good. God be glorified in all that we do. I love Jesus. As they say, I love me some Jesus. Amen. Thank God for his word. See you guys. Holla, uh, Friday. Friday. We'll be on Friday. We'll be on radio as well on Friday. I hope, hope to all you guys will be in with us on Friday. Blessings.